What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to stay up to the Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and turn the notification bell on if you want to get notified every single time I upload a brand new video. Today's my last day that I'm going to be at home. I'm going to be back Wednesday night. So I may make a video Wednesday night and maybe just recap some things, but I'm going to have other videos that I have scheduled to come out over the next couple of days um, for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, that would be. So that's three videos that'll come out. Um, if any Ravens news does happen, I will not be able to, you know, kind of talk about it instantly unless maybe I make a YouTube short uh, where I'd give instant thoughts, but I'll, I'll give updates right when I get back. Um, in other news, Saturday is the Ravens' first game. It's at, in my time, West Coast time. It's at 4 p.m. I believe that's 7 p.m. Eastern time. I will be going live at 6 p.m. Eastern time, so one hour before the game. I'll be going live, and we can talk any questions y'all have. I, I, I'll, I'll know everything about the New Orleans roster, everything about the Ravens roster. I'll know all of it, so I'll know all those different questions, matchups, everything that we want to see, as well as I will go live right after the game ends and then we can talk about the game, analyze different aspects. Any questions that you all have, I will once again be answering and talking about and analyzing. If you're asking, how did this player play? You know, when he made this mistake, when this guy caught this touchdown, what did you like about it? What did you like about Greg Rowan's play calling? All that stuff will be discussed. And the goal is that will continue throughout the regular NFL season. Once it gets going, go, go live one hour before the games, go live one for one hour right when the game ends. So, I'm not going to be streaming or anything like that during the games. Um, I typically watch games like by myself in silence, screaming and jumping up and down. That's typically how it works. Um, so, no, I'm not going to be streaming during the games or anything like that, but I'll stream before, stream right after, get all the thoughts and opinions out there. But now that that's out of the way, let's get into today's video. And today is a very interesting one. This is a player that I think not a lot of like, I don't, I don't want to say casual Ravens fans, but unless you've been really following training camp, you probably don't know the name Chris Westry. If you have been, you definitely do know the name. Um, but if you do not know the name, you, I think you should absolutely learn the name. I, I, I think that he could and should make a roster spot with the Ravens. If you don't know who he is, he's a six foot four cornerback. And even on his NFL, like combine, you know how the NFL puts out like the prospect things. He's actually listed at six, five on that, but he's listed at six, four, you know, by the Ravens. So I'm going to say six, four cornerback. Okay. Massive cornerback. And you would be like, Oh yeah, he's big. However, that typically means, you know, you're, you're a little bit slower when you're really that big. He ran a 4-3-1 40-yard dash. If I'm not mistaken, that is the fastest 40-yard dash for any player currently on the Ravens. The only player that I would that would have a chance at beating that would be Lamar Jackson. That's probably right around what Lamar Jackson would run. This guy is fast and he's physical. And you may be like, "Well, how did the Ravens get him?" Because you know, obviously he's on the roster now, but we didn't draft him. He wasn't an undrafted pick of how did the Ravens get him? He was with the Cowboys, okay, and he had some injury problems was was the real concern. And he wasn't able to get a lot of feet playing time. I believe he was only active for about two games on the Cowboys, and it was difficult for him to get spots. I believe he had a hamstring injury, um, and it, it was just difficult for him to get on the field. However, he can get on the field. He's been a baller, especially at training camp. And, you know, if you don't believe me, I can read through a couple of things that I've seen. Um, this one's from Kyle P. Barber, um, Ravens writer. And he says, Chris Westry has been denying nearly every pass thrown his way in 11s and following it up by mimicking the refs, calling it an incompletion. He's got that swagger. And I love that in a cornerback, especially a big physical cornerback. When they got that swagger, when we play against, Soft wide receivers like Juju, like Odell, like Chase Claypool. Like, I don't think there's anybody in the Bengals that I would consider soft, but those three guys, I, I think that they're like soft I, it, mentally. Um, that is Juju's like a physical wide receiver, but mentally, he's he's a bit soft. Um, and then you know, on the Baltimore Sun, they talk about um, he, I'll read a quick paragraph right now. One sequence in seven-on-seven seven action highlighted his potential. Midway through the Ravens' eighth practice of training camp Friday, he ran step-for-step step with wide receiver 
Sammy Watkins down the left sideline, then turned his head in time to break up a downfield shot. Not long after, Westry was seemingly beaten on an outbreaking route by wide receiver Deion Kane, only to reach in and dislodge the ball before Kane could complete a sideline catch. He is making plays, he's getting involved. And he's playing Ravens football, and he's and he's big and fast, and and it may be like, oh, but we have so many cornerbacks. Any long-standing Ravens fan will tell you you can never have enough cornerbacks. We almost lost Jimmy Smith for the season. Um, luckily, it was like an ankle sprain, and he's only going to miss like a week of practice. However, he was carted off the field. Like And Jimmy Smith is known to have injury history. Tavon Young's known to have injury history. And obviously you hope that that doesn't happen. But in recent years, the Ravens have absolutely needed to go to the reserve cornerbacks. And this is a guy where if he's given the chance, he could prove to be very good. And you look at who the Ravens have at cornerback right now. I, I can go through the depth chart. The Ravens have obviously Marlon and Marcus Peters, top two. Then Jimmy Smith. I think that's three. Then we have the slot guy in Tavon. I would say backup slot is Sean Wade. So that's five guys right there. Brandon Stevens, you can consider a cornerback. However, I typically think of him as more of a free safety. Um, but if you consider Brandon Stevens, that's six players. All right. And then it becomes Anthony Averett, who, who was solid last year, and Iman Marshall, who is yet to – ever really do anything for the Ravens. Nothing against him. He's had some injury, some bad luck and things like that. I I obviously wish him the best. If he makes the roster great for him, hopefully he gets that opportunity to play because I do like um, Iman Marshall. But if you don't consider, you know, or, you know, um, Brandon Stevens, a a cornerback, that's six guys. If you're including Anthony Averett, we could absolutely keep seven cornerbacks. Absolutely keep seven, seven cornerbacks, especially when, Two of our top four cornerbacks are very injury prone. And also, you think about the the later cornerback slots. What do what do you have to do when you're when you're on the back end of a depth chart? What do you have to do? You got to play special teams. Well, I would not mind a six foot four, four, three, one cornerback playing special teams, being a gunner, you know, running down there, you know, on on punts, running down there on kickoffs and getting to the players and making those hard tackles. I think that's something that you know, is not only like an, oh, yeah, he can do that, but I think that's a major benefit to the Ravens because you think about who the Ravens lost, Chris Moore, very good gunner. Um, you know, we we have Justice Hill, I think, is our best gunner currently, but Justice Hill has speed. You know, Justice Hill's going to make the roster spot. Don't take anything I say. It's not that. Like, we could have him and we could have, you know, Chris Westry running after the ball. That's good speed. That's good speed. That's good athleticism. And that's something that the Ravens could absolutely use. And so, you know, nothing against Amon Marshall, but he's not as fast. He's not as big. Um, and if we're looking at special teams, and, and Anthony Averett's a good special teams player, um, but he's not as big. And even though he is very fast, he's still not as fast. And I think that that shows that Chris Westry can absolutely be a major contributor to this team in special teams. And he could come in. In certain situations, for example, if if we're like imagine we're playing the Chiefs, right? You know, yes, Marlon's fast, but the Chiefs have two incredibly fast players, Mecole Hardman and Tyree Kill. Now Marlon can guard one of them. You know, if he plays off a of Tyree, he can stick with them um, relatively well. Um, you know, so that's okay. But Mecole Hardman doesn't run any crazy routes. You know, he he runs drag routes. He runs, you know, like little bubble screens and he runs deep. Having a six foot four player with good ball skills for that, that has a knack for swatting the ball in practice that runs a four, three, one is, is absolutely a need when you're playing against the chiefs. Chris Westry is that guy. And I think that he not only could make the team, I think he should make the team. And so he is a name that you should absolutely be keeping an, you know, an eye out for. If you're going to practice, look out for Chris Westry. If you're watching, you know, preseason games, look out for Chris Westry. I think he's absolutely a guy that could make a spot on this roster. I think he should make a spot on this roster. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun watching him play football because everything that we're hearing from training camp has been positive about him. And also, if you're a big Madden fan like myself, he's an absolute Madden beast. 
<laughs> you know, six foot four cornerback. Oh, that's ridiculous. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Subscribe for Daily Ravens content. Comment your thoughts and opinions on Chris Westry, you know, whether or not you think he can make the team. I think he can, and I think he should. But um, remember, next couple of videos will be pre recorded. I'm recording them all today. So um, that'll all be out then. But thank you, everybody, for watching. I will see all of you again tomorrow.